the present and also okay, sorry. I I saw my 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 life, past, present, and future from a different perspective because it's a lot mapping about finding a new perspective on your life. So I did basically tell the story of uh, myself imagining that I was there still, even in a previous experience, a uh, uh, physical experience, uh, when I was a seed of man in, uh, in the beginning, the night of times, you know, you need to have a lot of imagination to do this. <laughs> but then I, I entered in this real life when the river of mother with the river of father met. And this is the, the river of my life along the shapes of which, uh, or the shores of which, of which there, are, there are all the emotions that I, I felt in primordial events of my life, because this is the, the, the goal and the scope of, the, of, the, of this <clears throat> project and drawing, until I imagine my future getting to the sea of freedom. So there's all a story behind that. And if you like, I would love, I would love to give all the participants uh, the little present, the book, The River of Life, that came out after, after this, uh, this book. Uh, you will find the link to download it after with the documentation of uh, today's meeting. So it's, a, it's an old story, but uh, um, it was for me an, an, an unbelievable experience. And after three months of drawing, uh, finding pictures, uh, writing texts, I was really <laughs> tired. I was laughing by myself, crying and things. It was a, quite a deep experience. And uh, I felt different. And I, the, the, the emotion that I was really there with me after the end of this drawing was a, a sense of freedom and a sense of observing things from a different perspective. Out of this uh, book, a project came out and a network has been founded that is called EME meaning by that eliciting mapping managing emotions and uh, in the in the name there's a there's the there's the destiny the latin we are saying nomen omen so in the acronym there is really what we we do with this group of fantastic friends and professionals of more than 20 countries so very intercultural <laughs> environment and uh, we try to help people companies associations uh, schools university to elicit emotions, to map them out in terms of representing them, basically via the emotional mapping, but they can be represented and anchored even in other, in other many ways, in order to better manage them, or better say, in order to get along better with them, with emotions, because we cannot really talk about managing emotions. Anyway, it's a way of recognizing our emotions and. Uh, uh, and so this is what we do uh, and uh, with, uh, with Ali Bagley, uh, uh, we founded in England a, a sort of branch of Bertani Consulting that is dealing only with terms uh, connected to emotional geography. So this is uh, shortly the, the history of where we are, how the project of uh, geography of emotion uh, was born. And uh, the, let's say the, the added value uh, when it's in the very generously said that I invented the methodology. Uh, it might be partially true in terms of uh, uh, finding many application to the uh, emotional geography, emotional mapping, because uh, and this, the history of emotional mapping, that was the theme of the thesis that I did at university, was basically on one theme, love. And uh, that was all, which, I mean, it's a very important theme, but it's not the only one. I thought that it might be applied to many different fields. And uh, so I created a game because we work a lot with games in, other, in all our activities. We, we created games and uh, uh, we use them for our educational uh, processes. And uh, that is called Map Out Your Emotion. That is simply based on two wheels. There's a wheel with geographical elements and there, there's a wheel with emotions. And, uh, Depending on what you are mapping, you can map your life, you can map uh, your profession, you can map uh, your sport, uh, your uh, whatever. I mean, we, we found like 35 different applications so far. But the, the criteria is very simple. Think about the emotion that you are feeling in a certain moment uh, and uh, match that emotion with a place. You need 
to be very instinctive in that. You don't have to resonate too much. I don't know. You are the first day of your school, let's say. You were um, worried, maybe, or wor you or you were yeah yeah. Let's say you you were worried. So if you were worried, this worrying uh, you match this. It was a big uh, worry or a small one or. Um, you may watch this with uh, with a mountain or with a lake, with a mountain, uh, do it very instinctively. So you create a sort of imaginary place representing the emotion you had the first day of your school. That can be the mountain of fear, the mountain of worry, the lake of, uh, of whatever. So this is simply the, the criteria. And this is just a short video of three minutes uh, where you can see some uh, maps of the different uh, in different fields. So just uh, three minutes for this. Cercare la realizzazione in una vita, trovare un senso che giustifichi questa fatica, sporlo di un oblio fatto di pregiudizi, baciare in bocca i vizi, cadendo negli abissi. Gli abissi della mente sono fiumi d'acqua pura, seguire la corrente, gestire la paura, paura di quello che in fondo non conosci, non siamo mica pesci, ma rimaniamo tutti i giorni, tutti i giorni, tutti i giorni. Thank you. 
So uh, let's go into the, the time that, I mean, I, I'm sure we are interested in many things, but uh, interculture is the core business, let's say, of Seattle. So I thought it could be nice today to, to make some mapping exercise on a specific term of interculture, if we can say this specific. Uh, interculture is also very important for our uh, activity. We have created a game that is called the River of Interculture. And uh, those who would like to, to join us uh, in May, I think, or later on, the information is more precise. We are going to play in, a, in Seattle, Italia, but in English, the, um, this game that is really based on theory of interculture and practical example and mapping activities, uh, interactive game that may last up to five hours, but we will play that for two hours. Uh, so I've, as you might have seen in the, in the video, there are some maps that are really very connected with interculture. This is a, a map of the world with a person uh, <clears throat> naming uh, the emotions that different places uh, arise for, for her. Uh, elicited for her and uh, we use this also in order to map a movie or scripts uh, or a full intercultural experience. Uh, this is uh, just a map, I go quickly to the point, uh, of a journey that uh, I took in uh, with the Trans-Siberian train. What we could do today is uh, find uh, uh, a moment, a, a, an event, start thinking about it, an intercultural event that uh, left you an important emotion, a deep emotion. In the case of my journey to, uh, with Trans-Siberian, of course, I, I, I had many emotions uh, along the journey, but there was a effect uh, that in particular uh, left me something uh, that, that was, we were approaching Mongolia, uh, we, a small group of international uh, travelers, because that was a Russian train, so not touristic, and, but we gathered with two or three people of different nationalities, and uh, we were heading to Mongolia, and there were still two journeys to go to Mongolia, and we were going to the restaurant, and we found the restaurant closed. And, I mean, closed, and they told us that it was going to open uh, maybe once in, in Mongolia, so after two days, and we were completely uh, starving, and uh, we didn't know what to do. I mean, it was not a tragedy, but uh, two days without eating, because the train doesn't stop from there to Mongolia. And so there were two, an old lady, a babushka, and an old man that were, for each uh, wagon, there, were, there are two people, and they, they saw us in a little uh, troubles, and uh, they they offered us to cook some blinis for us. We didn't ask them anything. They, they just went in a little kitchen and they saw that we were starving and they gave us uh, a, a big quantity of blinis. And uh, this was something that uh, moved me very much. They didn't want any money for this. They just gave, me, uh, gave us these, uh, these blinis. And I mean, for, for me, that was really the, the heels or the peak of authenticity, because, uh, you know, stereotypes about Russia, Russia is only Moscow, Russia is only making money, I don't know, especially in this period. But I think the real soul of Africa is, is the, are these people. So for me, it sounded like something very authentic. So the peak of authenticity. So just, uh, this is basically the, uh, the idea that is uh, um, behind. So in the, in the, then I will tell you about this if we have time. So what I uh, would like to do is uh, uh, seeing these creating rooms and uh, there just try to share with uh, other friends of your room one or two intercultural experience uh, that left you something and name this experience. Then it could be nice to, to gather all the name of your experience and create a, a global map of today's meeting with one or two of our personal intercultural experiences named with emotional geography. I don't know if I was, I, I, I've been a little bit long, but uh, I don't know if it's clear, especially what, I, what I'm saying. So let, let me see if I understand this, what we're doing in a breakout room. Yeah. 
let's we'll start with one intercultural experience if we have time we'll move on to the second one so we're going to tell everybody where it happened yes and then we're going to give it an imaginary name yeah just a short i mean each person will tell the others what happened shortly and and, and then where do giving a name where do we get the wheels of emotions and places uh, the wheels are are here i don't know if you if, if you want to do a sort of a screenshot can you, can you go back to that and let us take a minute if we can just take a screenshot of that with our telephones yeah, these are the, but uh, they are just uh, i mean think about the place and an emotion even in, even uh, if they are not on the wheels it doesn't matter it's just uh, matching emotions or feelings with uh, with places or atmospherical phenomenon. So then we're gonna then we're gonna talk about the emotions that went with this experience. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I I, I told you for me that experience in Russia was about the authenticity of Russian soul. Yes. Uh, and then do you want us? Do you want us to draw something? Yeah, I mean, once you have created the place, uh, that would be nice to to draw it, but uh, and then to gather all these uh, imaginary places and make a, a global map of it. Of course, we don't have time. I can do this uh, later on if you like. You can send me your uh, your draw of one one place, and then I I will put them together and make a collage, and that would be a nice picture of today. Does anybody have questions before we go to our breakout rooms? Go ahead and put it in the chat if you have any questions. Okay, um, so I'm going to go can ahead. We, and... Can we see the question again? Or maybe somebody could put the question in the chat. Ah, the, what you should, okay. What we're doing. <laughs> ah. Maybe you could take okay. a screenshot of that also. I will do a screenshot as well. <laughs> do that as well. That was a great idea, Joe. Thank you. I teach online. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you Not always that. very technically brilliant, but you know. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So I'll go ahead and put us into breakout rooms. Okay. Okay, so everybody's in the, in the breakup room now. But I need to know how to, what time? Ah, yes, how much time? I just wanted to ask. Uh, Thank 15, you. 15 minutes, maybe 15. 15 okay, minutes. we'll give it 15 minutes. Uh, sorry, I, I'm i not in the breakout room. <laughs> I haven't um, done it. None of us are in breakout rooms. None of us are. Okay, none of us. Okay. <laughs> she hasn't done it yet. <laughs> I understood okay. they are okay, all in Claudia, the Claudia, here we go. One, two, okay, three. Okay, thanks. Is everybody in a breakout room?
Welcome back, everyone. Hello. I wonder if you would like to take just a moment and hold up your map right to your camera so that we can see it. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Because, uh, well, in our group, we just gave the name, and I don't know if. Uh, uh, wow. You can just draw it, but you can draw it. <laughs> oh, we're a bit naughty. Shall I try and draw mine? <laughs> <We just don't. laughs> <laughs> That'll be quite fun. We were too busy talking too much. Naughty. I, we were so busy finding the names. So we didn't get around to drawing. We found names. <laughs> that was funny enough. Just doing yeah, that. Was. <laughs> we, di we didn't draw either. No, we just chatted and found names. What, uh, what could uh, I might ask you, because we don't have time, of course, to go through all the places that uh, you, you all created, but uh, to write in the chat the name of your place, because yeah. then uh, I can gather them and create uh, a, a visual map of this, if you don't mind. Just can you write in the chat the name of your, uh, of your place? Oh, I can't write in the chat. <laughs> Who said that? Who cannot write? Uh, I don't know. How you I can... did. Cynthia, can, yeah. can, do you just have to tell it us won't, how? It won't open. Then what was it? What was yours, Cynthia? You can just tell us out loud. Um, did we have, uh, uh, Vanita, did we have a name? We told, we had three long stories, but I don't remember names that we added. <laughs> I, I think I it think was, Cynthia, the, the city of wonder or of awareness. Yeah, right. You referred to that. And Maybe appreciation, the, yeah, and appreciation. Yeah. The city of awareness and appreciation, I think. Hurricane of Injustice from oh. Joe. Yes. Kirsten said the cathedral of surprise burned the fertile swamp of confusion. Hmm, burned. That's interesting. Claudia, the whirlwind of desperation. Jutta said the spring rain of empathy. Isn't um, that beautiful? Really <laughs> beautiful. <Yotas. laughs> uh, Molly said volcanoes of fear. Vera, cup of comfort. Bjorn said cloud of trust. Fascinating stories, all of you. Yeah, behind each name, there are very interesting stories. <laughs> but I don't know if we have time to, to share. Maybe just one or two, if you don't mind. I don't know. Is there someone who would love to, to share uh, with the whole group the, the origin of these uh, places? <laughs> we are curious. And Cynthia added, city of appreciation, of awareness, of separation. I don't know, there are very intriguing names. Uh, all these. Uh, That's cheating, she got three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we just limited ourselves to one. <laughs> but it's so a lovely a story. <laughs> it's a lovely story, though. Yeah, if we took them all. We could write a good, a good film script, couldn't we? Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, <laughs> I, I create a map and I'd send it to you. Then uh, my husband's it's... a filmmaker. <laughs> really? He's just gone out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Usually, a lot of ideas come out from these uh, exercises. Okay. Great. So yeah, maybe we can just uh, use these five minutes to uh, finish my presentation, if you don't mind, uh, Cindy. Is that okay? Yes, please. Yes, of course. Just uh, go back to the screen. Okay, basically, it was this was a my 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 another uh, experience, a short one, and it was a very a strange coincidence that I was with uh, with Joe in the same uh, in the same room. Was she shared without knowing this that uh, there was a story about Cuba, her story, uh -huh, her hurricane of injustice, if I may say, or I decided, Joe is about uh, uh, an experience uh, Joe had in Cuba. My experience was much funner, funnier than that. We were talking uh, with a uh, um, journalist uh, about, uh, you know, the. Uh oh. 
about your you sorry, you are muted yourself, Marco. You have muted yourself. Ah, so, ah, sorry, sorry. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry okay. about that. Yes, please. Oh, no, no, sorry. So I was having a lunch in Cuba with some journalists of Republica and uh, other friends from different countries, and uh, we were talking about stomach problems that might come out when you are in Latin America. And uh, when I was in Mexico, I I had this kind of vendetta di Montezuma, you know, stomach problem. And uh, a lady told me that with the seeds of papaya, I I could have solved these problems. And frankly, I, I took these seeds and I solved my stomach uh, problems. And so in this table, in Spanish, I told the then famous sentence, con la papaya se soluciona todo. You solve all your problems with papaya. And a friend of mine, a painter, told me, Marco, and everybody started to laugh and I didn't understand why. And then a friend of mine told me, Marco, watch out because in Cuba, uh, and it's the only country in Latin America, papaya is not the fruit as everywhere else, but it means something different. And you can imagine hey. what. <laughs> I leave you to, to your imagination. So I said this, con la papaya se soluciona todo. And, uh, uh, they are still laughing about it. This is just another intercultural. Uh, but the thing is, they call papaya fruta bomba, <laughs> yes. which to me sounds more sexual <laughs> than papaya. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. anyway. Okay, so this was the other uh, event, and, uh, but you understood the, uh, the, the meaning of mapping intercultural, but it can be... Um, Intercultural can be mapped in many ways. In our small group, we, we already had ideas on how to map stereotypes. Uh, so I just would like to, to um, end up this meeting uh, thanking you for your attention with some activities that we have uh, in, the, in the following days. Uh, in Italy, we are delivering, uh, there is an event uh, on next Saturday, and it's about uh, what we are doing for schools. We work a lot with schools not only on interculture, but on uh, different uh, uh, activities connected with uh, emotional geography. Uh, then we organize a, a geomaiutical journey. This is something, uh, apart from games and coaching, counseling, uh, our core business is organizing geomaiutical journey. We call them geomaiutical because it's the place and the, the way of living the place by trying to get the, the genius lodge of the place or the, the somewhereness, uh, it's a powerful engine to pull out emotions a place. If you are there in that moment, you know, the mindfulness, Iket Nunc and all these things, because if you are there and you are thinking about that, something else, uh, it, doesn't matter, it doesn't happen anything <laughs> to you in terms of emotions. So, and this, this, this is a three days uh, journey that we organize in Anzio and Rome. Then, uh, and maybe some of you might be interested, uh, with Ali Bagley, we will deliver uh, a full course on uh, um, emotional mapping and, uh, and vocational pictures. That's uh, uh, really uh, two hours, that's uh, so enough time to meet, maybe more than two hours uh, during which you can map out your river of life. It's not about the intercultural, it's your river of life. And also we will uh, read the maps with uh, some tools to, to better understand the maps. Then in uh, Sieta Italia, as I said, on the 6th of May, we will play this game of uh, interculture, or totally based on interculture. And on the 3rd of July, still in, uh, in uh, Sieta, uh, I will introduce this uh, other game that is overground, that it's about emotional uh, photography. It's about uh, catching emotions, uh, and it's a nice game in terms of uh, uh, empowering uh, uh, your perception of reality. When we walk, not always we pay attention to what is around us, but uh, there's uh, always a lot around us, even if we are two meters from where we live or if we are where we live. So it's about uh, focusing, it's about attention, and it's about also how to take nice pictures, by the way. So again, I. The, the kid with the suitcase, thanks uh, really you all for the attention and uh, for those who like to, to read the full story, you will find uh, in, the, in the presentation that I kindly ask Cindy to, to share with, uh, with participants, with attendees, you, will, you can download the book and uh, know a little bit more about the, this project.
Thank you so much, Marco. This was a wonderful presentation today, and yeah. I really appreciate Thank you very much the time you. and your interest. Uh, yeah. One quick question for those of you who are still here. I would like to know, oh, we have questions. Cynthia has a question. Yes, please. please? If you can unmute yourself, Cynthia. I was clapping. I didn't have my hand up. Ah, <laughs> ah, ah, Vincent, the same? Vera, the same? Yes, <laughs> we're clapping. Um, I would like to know from each of you, do you prefer the 12 noon hour or the three o'clock hour? So 12 noon, if you like the 12 noon, or if you prefer three o'clock in the afternoon, just a survey. Okay. It's I'm, very, I'm, very, I'm very sorry, sorry, but next meeting will be at 3 p.m. again, because we're having our colleague from the USA, and for him to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning yeah. will be too early. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really sorry, if, even if all of you prefer noon, next meeting will be on the 3rd of April at 3 p.m. set, and our speaker and presenter will be Brett, uh, Brett Perry. And many of us will know him because he is, of course, the president of the CTR USA. But apart from that, he is a founder of Culture Mentor. And we still keep a little bit secret about what he's going to speak about because we have not finalized, actually, the title of the presentation. But that would be on the third, as usual, the first Monday of the month at 3 p.m. Thank you very much, Victoria. Thank you. And thank you all. I appreciate your time and your enthusiasm. This was really wonderful. Yay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, bye. bye. everybody. Have a nice day. Bye you bye. too, Vincent. Oh, is Marco gone? Okay. <laughs> I'll send him a note. Hey, when are we going to do viewpoints, Burned? Yes, I'm going to go into the Zoom, um, the, the, the theater thing right after this and see what is available in 